This is Mr. Good Pliers with a special unboxing video. Today we are going to be unboxing not a new item, but several used items. These used items are from a swap meet. Yes, this is the latest swap meet haul. Now for those of you who know me, I can walk up to a swap meet with a stack of cash and magically transform it into a box of goodies. Now we might title this All the Small Things Part 1 because this is a box of smalls as they are termed in the flea market and swap meet world. So come on, let's dive in and check out the box of smalls. First thing we've got to come out is, this is reclaimed life motor oil for your car. This is actual recycled motor oil can. It says for better performance and longer life, refinery sealed. That was a thing back in the day. Uh, for quality of oil, quality assurance, they would say refinery sealed on the cans. Now, the other side looks about the same. And it says, Life Motor Oil is a high viscosity index oil, scientifically re-refined in whole or in part from selected previously used motor oil. Emphasis on the selected. Yeah. So we got the Reclaimed Life motor oil. This was SAE 30 and asking price 45. I was getting low on cash and I bought that so I offered the guy 40 and he took it and that's one thing about a swap meet, you know, I like to be fair on price. You know, I don't like to beat somebody down. If they've, you know, got 40 bucks on a can, I'm not going to be a ball buster and offer them 20. So, and there's been other times, you know, I've, I've uh, had a guy price me something for five bucks and I've paid him 10 just because you know, the wow factor, the cool factor. So, next item out, uh, five bucks, not bad. X-Men 1971 Plymouth Satellite Station Wagon. This will be one that I'll look forward to doing a... Maybe kind of call it a customization video, except it'll be reverse customization. I'll be bringing it back to a stock configuration. Get rid of that uh, ugly yellow and maybe put a more 1970s friendly style color on that. Next item out of the box, we have the Sedgwick County 1967 license plate. Uh, I've got several of the 1967 Impala four-door hardtops, which that's a famous movie car. Uh, for those of you who know me, I've got kind of a movie car bug that's bit me. And I'll be working on a couple of those supernatural cars here as time goes on. Another item bagged up to keep it from getting scratched up is this 1939 Dodge Hubcap. Now you can kind of see under the paint there, you've got that nice Ram's Head logo with the front leg kind of arched, almost like he's jumping. This one, you know, Got the great old patina on it, but this one really is going to need to be cleaned to bring it back to show all of its glory through. This one's kind of an interesting story. This is a Jif peanut butter jar. 
I bought this from a gentleman from Nebraska and he had had shark teeth inside of it and he was partitioning those shark teeth out into little bags and he had not wanted to sell the jar initially uh, because he thought I was trying to lowball him on all the shark teeth when actually what I wanted was the jar and so I made a ridiculous offer of 10 bucks just because there's probably $20 worth of cool on this old jar with the old pad printed 69 cent price tag and he accepted my $10 offer and dumped the shark teeth into another jar and as you can see there there's still one little black reminder inside of there that that once held shark teeth so kind of kind of a neat swap meat story there Next items out of the box are these Firestone hydraulic wheel cylinders and brake shoe return springs. Now that's kind of an interesting relic of the day. Uh, I had Goodyear shock absorbers before and now I'll have some Firestone brake parts to display alongside of those. And there's three more of them and to get the get the full effect of the Firestone brake parts next coming out this is a 1953 Packard quarter panel molding now the gentleman who sold me this told me that he had trucked it along to the swap meet for several years and it had the original paper with it which had crumbled and disintegrated uh, but he had assured me that this was an NOS part and based on the condition uh, it, it would appear to be never installed. I don't see any evidence that the pins have had had nuts or had any mounting done and I I like this uh, not only because it's a great display piece being NOS, but it also belongs to a car that I have. Thank you to Mike for selling me that one. That'll be one that I'll anticipate showing later in the future here on YouTube. Then we have the NOS Defender curb alarm box. Now I was told that this was different from regular curb feelers and that there was an actual, shall we call it, maybe an electronic alarm inside of there. Now I'm not sure how that would have been wired. Uh, and that you can see there on the box it says electronic alarm. Probably a little more complicated than your average spring-loaded curb feeler and you can see it was done by Walter B. Bowers Brokerage Company. Boy, that's a mouthful. But there you have the NOS box. Fold that up. When we get her home, we'll put a piece of styrofoam in there and that'll make a nice display piece. And then we have the vintage aluminum ashtray. We've got the uh, handsy gentleman there. And then on the back, leaving nothing to the imagination. Kind of a great old kitschy piece of Americana there, the cast aluminum. And for five bucks as a conversation piece, impossible to pass that one up. And one last piece out of the box. This is a 1939 Chevrolet hood ornament. Picked this one up for $20. Just has that great art deco look to it and 
it really tells a story of the history of automotive styling. This was kind of built to replicate in some way a streamliner steam train as it appears to me and likely would have appeared to the designer who made it and you know you, you think about the history of these cars you know you put them in their context how many times would that 36 chevy that wore that hood ornament have waited on a steam train you know and one thing that that 36 chevy would not probably have done in its lifetime although it possibly could have but not likely would have been deliver people to an airport to fly on commercial flights and so if you had a 1950s hood ornament say 1955 Pontiac that would be more of an airplane style and it, it just kind of shows you how concurrent styling for different modes of transportation came alongside of each other and went hand in hand and for 20 bucks, that's a conversation piece that I didn't feel like I could pass up. So I'll be going over these pieces with the camera here. And this is unboxing number one of the 2020 Sunflower Swap Meet. I'm Mr. Good Pliers, saying goodbye. Stay tuned, we will have a 2020 Sunflower Swap Meet unboxing number two. Take a watch of that one, thanks.